Wonderful. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm excited that you're joining us for the virtual college exploration series um, for all Illinois students. Um, before we get started today and I hand it over to our panelists, I just want to run through um, a few things. Oh, I'm going to share over you just real quick, Elizabeth. I apologize so I can share that screen. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just talk through a couple things for you all um, as the students attending the session. So first and foremost, this is a webinar format, meaning that your cameras and your sound is off. So don't panic if you're looking for that button on the screen. We cannot see or hear you. Um, and with that, we ask that you ask uh, questions in the Q&A section um, here today. When you ask questions in the Q&A, our panelists will go ahead um, and respond to those throughout the session. So please make sure to utilize that. They want to hear from you, um, and it's a great resource. Um, another reminder that there are many more sessions like this as well, um, so I'd encourage you all to explore the IACAC.org website to register for more sessions um, or to share these sessions as well because they are being recorded and are available after the session. So if there's anything that you want to go back and visit from this session or explore anything else, um, know that those are also available on the IACAC.org website. Um, but without further ado, thank you again for being here. I'm going to hand it over to our panelists to go ahead and start presenting. And I'll go ahead and stop sharing so that you can share, Elizabeth. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, everyone. We are excited to have you here. Um, we just wanted to remind you today's session is choosing a major and being an agent of change. Um, and as a reminder for the session description, we want to talk a little bit about if you're passionate about social change, but wondering how to tie that into a major. Um, there's so many ways that students can be an agent of change while studying and even after you've graduated, um, both through your major and getting involved on campus. Um, so we are excited to tell you a little bit more about each of our institutions. Um, and I think we can head to the next slide and we will tell you who we are and then we will tell you a little bit more about what to expect. So my name is Jennifer Sloan. I'm from University of Cincinnati. I am a regional enrollment coordinator in Chicago. So I'm based in the Chicago area and I work with students from eight different states, including everyone from the state of Illinois. So it's nice to see all of you today. Uh, Elizabeth, I think you are still there Always happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Miramontes. I'm the Associate Director of International Admissions at University of St. Francis. We're located in Joliet, Illinois. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisbeth Roman. I am a freshman admissions counselor from Northern Illinois University, located in DeKalb, Illinois, and my pronouns are she, hers. I have a bad habit of doing that. Uh, so I'm going to cover what you will, you should expect to take out of this presentation today. So the goals are to help you as a student determine how to channel your desire to be an agent for change and how to turn those into actionable steps on your campus, uh, to consider how to make a difference while pursuing your academic goals, and to help you understand what to look for in a college campus that will help inspire your passion. So um, the main purpose of this presentation was it revolves around, you know, being intentional. Um, and here is, you know, a list of things that we thought would be um, are highly recommended uh, when you're searching for your, you know, your next home, your next school, whether it's a community college, a university or college. Uh, so the first thing would be research and compare colleges. Um, college Board has a great resource where you're able to input the all the schools and universities that you're interested in, and then would be able to do like a um, cost to cost comparison, um, and also any other things that um, are important to you. Uh, visit your school. So one of the most important things about figuring out um, what school is your, your best, um, your next home would be uh, visiting your school, whether that's, you know, virtually or on campus and complete a checklist. Uh, and after the session, I'll go ahead and, and share those resources. The next thing is trying to figure out what you like. 
Um, you know, whether you're doing um, any volunteer work in high school or in a community college, try to gauge into those, uh, into those skills and, and those abilities to try to figure out, you know, what is the next be uh, best uh, step for you. What are your career goals? What do you want to do? Do you want to go into the health field or is the health field completely out of the picture? Uh, one of the best ways is maybe talking to a professional uh, that works in that field or even talking to your counselors uh, or teachers that uh, have been in that field. Uh, and we also wanted to remind you that it is okay to be undecided. Uh, usually that's one of the biggest majors on college campuses. And you know, when you are in your first and second year, for the most part, you'll be taking general education courses. So that will give you the ability to figure out, you know, what is, what is, what are your likes and dislikes on college? Visit on your own time. Um, questions uh, you need to ask yourself throughout this process is not independent of the type of impact that you can have on a community. You know, regardless of your major and what you pick, um, you can be a change agent in whatever major you pick, whether it's accounting, whether it's social work, being a change and, you know, making those changes in a community, in a university is not just for social work majors or criminal social, social justice majors. Uh, there are schools that are, you know, there are so many schools out there that are heavy on values, they're mission driven, no matter the spaces that you are in, you have to ask yourself, can I do better within that, that field? Um, is that something that you see yourself making a big change in? When we look at the current climate and what is going on right now with you know, Black Lives Matter and all the changes, start to think about who were the change agents back in the 1960s? I'll give you, you know, a couple of examples. For example, the Greensboro sit-in. They, it was pre pretty much for young men in college and their majors were varied anywhere from engineering, uh, engineering physics to chemistry and biology. Uh, one, um, majored in business administration and accounting. So it definitely can vary and you are able to create that change regardless of the type of major. It's just a matter of you picking a university that best fits you and that enables you to have that change. Uh, another example is UCLA. Students took similar approach in 1993 uh, using activism to push the university to create a Chicano studies department. Um, or, for example, 1968, Howard University took over administrative buildings and barricaded their, their dormitories, um, and they demanded that, you know, at the time, the president should resign, and, you know, they wanted the curriculum to emphasize the Black history and culture. You know, the, the list goes on and on with the Chicano student walkouts, which is more with high school students, so it's not just, you know, to a specific major, um, you can use those skills and apply it in any major that, that you take on. So, you know, within this presentation, you're gonna hear from all these universities that will give you more information about how their universities give those spaces and those tools for their students to create change. Okay, now we've all had an issue with the mic, so we've all been there. <laughs> um, okay, so I will tell you a little bit about Cincinnati and then some of the things that we have to offer you on our campus. So if you aren't familiar with us, we are a large public research university located in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are the Bearcats. Um, very excited to start our football season on Saturday. Um, and uh, we are about two miles from downtown Cincinnati to give you a frame of reference of where we are located. We are in Cincinnati proper, so a lot of people ask, um, are you close to Cincinnati? We are actually in the city. We're just not right in downtown Cincinnati. Um, one thing that's a little bit unique about the campus is you can't drive through most of it. Um, it's all very pedestrian friendly. So you can walk pretty much anywhere on our campus in about 15 minutes or less, um, which creates a really 
traditional campus feel for our students, even though we have the city all around us. So it's something a lot of our students really like about their experience. Uh, next slide, please. So we are actually, and this is a fall 2018 number, and we are officially over 46,000 as of this year. So we're pretty excited. Um, we continue to reach enrollment goals every year um, and continue to grow, which is exciting. So um, 46,000 students in total. We have just over 26,000 undergraduates on our main campus, um, over 3,500 international students. About 25% of our students come from outside the state of Ohio. About 20% of our students identify as multicultural. Um, we have been called one of the world's most beautiful campuses. We happen to agree. So we hope that at some point you have an opportunity to come and see for yourself. Um, we are ranked number three as an up and coming university in the nation uh, by US News and World Report. We've been rated best public university in the nation by Washington Center and number one return on investment um, in uh, MIC publication. So um, some really great things to share, just some general background about us. Uh, next slide. Okay, and then a little bit more about our academics. So we have 11 colleges, um, nine undergraduate colleges, more than 300 different, 350 different academic programs of study. So even without seeing the list, you can go ahead and, and infer that there is a lot to choose from. Our Center for Exploratory Studies, which I actually will talk about a little bit on the next slide. Um, we have 11 different libraries within our UC system, um, internationally recognized faculty. Um, on an annual basis, we have over $400 million of research happening on our campus, so we are a very research-heavy institution. Um, we have a renowned university honors program. About 5 to 7% of our students are considered for the university honors program each year. 70% of our classes have fewer than 40 students. So that's a number that I really like to share. We're a big school, you've seen the numbers, we have some really amazing things to offer, um, but one of the biggest questions we get are how big are my classes gonna be? And it'll depend on a lot of different factors, but the vast majority are going to be very reasonable size, which a lot of students are really pleasantly surprised to hear. Um, and the one thing I will say about university honors, um, and I will tie this into few things going forward. Um, our campus puts a lot of emphasis on what we call experiential learning or learning outside the classroom. Um, we're well known for co-op opportunities, which are hands-on learning opportunities um, associated with some of our programs. We were the founders of co-op education. Um, not all of our programs will co-op, but they will all have some type of experiential learning component as a part of them. University Honors operates in the same way, that it's more experience-based than it is about the specific classes that you're taking. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, looking at majors that we offer, what do you want to change and how? And this is a big question, right, to really kind of sit down and think through. Um, and the answer might be a whole lot of things. But I think we have to start small in that we have to kind of really figure out what is motivating us and what our goals are um, to really best figure out how to move forward in choosing a major that will help you facilitate that. So I've listed here a few things that I think could help point you in the right direction. Um, healthcare. We all know that there are some really amazing things that happen every single day in healthcare. We also know that there are a lot of inequities in the field. So some of the majors that you might be able to think about pursuing um, would be nutrition and dietetics. Um, and that's gonna be something where you're, you may be helping people um, who are looking for a health and weight loss program, but it also many times could be working with patients who are recovering from any number of various illnesses and, and helping them to figure out how do I create this healthy lifestyle going forward and what does that mean? And sometimes that can be a really overwhelming thing because it could be a lot of change coming at once for somebody. Um, and it is just incredibly valuable information to be able to provide um, medicine in general, of course, as a physician, physical therapist, occupational therapist, um, athletic training, so many different things that would fall under that umbrella. Um, Health and Society is a program that we offer that's a little broader based program. Uh, nursing, public health. I don't know that public health has been on the forefront anywhere as much as it has in the last six months. Um, history. So for a lot of the change that many of us seek, I think that having a foundation in history and understanding the root of, of causes, of things that people are passionate about, of change, um, some of the things that Elizabeth has talked about, um, 
we have to learn that history, right? Before we can go forward and make great change. I think we have to know some of where we've come from. Um, so race, ethnicity, and inequality um, is a track within our history major, um, gender, women, and sexuality, religion and culture, um, and sociology, I think is a really interesting one where you really get to understand more um, about people in general. Um, and I think that that maybe is a, a thing that we, we think we know sometimes, but when you really get to dive in deeply to that, um, it can be a really profound learning experience and um, a lot of information you can take going forward. Um, law and order. So I think it's no secret that that is an area where there's so much change to be had and I know everyone probably has a different opinion on how, but no better way to be a catalyst for change than to be a part of it. So Law and Society is a program. Um, we are very well known for our criminal justice program on our campus. There are many tracks within the criminal justice program. Um, psychology, again, um, understanding not only the brain, but understanding people. Um, social work, social justice. So I think social justice is gonna be an obvious choice, um, for someone who's really looking to motivate change. But what I hope that you see from this and what the other schools mention as well is that that is always something that can be encompassed in virtually everything that you're looking at. Um, our human development and community engagement major is something that would be a really great fit for students who um, are looking for um, looking at nonprofits, things like that. Um, education, what better way to help be an agent of change than to work with young people every day. Um, cultural and language studies. And then I also mentioned exploratory studies. And I, sorry, I don't want to rush through things, but I see I'm getting towards the end of my time and I want to make sure I touch on everything. Um, exploratory studies is a big program for us at Cincinnati. It's a freshman year program um, that students apply to. You apply to the university by major and exploratory studies is one that you could apply to. We find that while some students are undecided, some have so many passions and they don't quite know how they want to channel them. Exploratory studies is a place where you can come and spend that first year taking classes within a variety of different disciplines to help you figure out what the best path forward for you will be. So all of our students participate in um, learning communities, which are usually about 25 to 30 people. Um, and for our exploratory students, they actually do that twice a week. So it's an opportunity to learn more about your interests, to really explore your goals and your passions um, beyond just taking the classes so that by the end of freshman year, you have a sense of where you may want to go from here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the Bearcat Promise. So we really want students to feel at home at UC and to make campus home. Part of how we do that is sponsoring Welcome Weekend, our first year experience. So regardless of your major, you will be involved in first year experiences. They will look different depending on the college because each college runs them a little bit differently. Um, the learning communities I mentioned would be a part of that. Um, but it, it is a way to get more engaged with campus, to learn more about where you are um, and how to start to navigate that community. Um, programs that foster an inclusive community are over 500 different student organizations. There's so many different activities to help introduce you to campus and the world around you. Um, exploring your op options and choices. So I mentioned exploratory, experiential learning, sorry. Um, that can include things listed here like research, co-op, internships, studying abroad, service learning. So whatever major you choose, there is going to be some element outside of the classroom to help you get to get your feet wet on that before you ever graduate and go out into the workforce. Um, and then a plan to stay on track. So we are committed as much as you are to your academic and pre-professional advising, um, workshops that hopefully will set you in the right direction. We want you to graduate with a plan, not just your diploma, but next steps of where you go from here. Um, and our career services is an amazing resource for our students, not only when you get to graduation, but throughout your time on campus. Next slide, please. Okay, so I am just about on, up on my time and I wanna make sure that I give time um, to the other presenters as well. But I wanted to say um, all of the majors that I mentioned are just a snapshot of what we offer. And I think you can find change agent and problem solving and so many things across campus. Another way that you can do that is by getting involved in student activities. I wanna highlight the link that I have at the top, which is campus link 
www.ucsd.edu. Um, that is where you can find all of the activities, all of our 500 plus activities on campus. So if you are looking for something specific, um, you can go to that link at any point, type that in and you'll find out a little bit more information about it. Um, some that I have listed here are, I think what I would say fall in a more obvious category of um, inspiring students who are seeking um, to be an agent of change and a way to be able to get involved on campus. But again, with over 500 different things to choose from, this is just the tip of the iceberg of all of the things that you could do on our campus. So hopefully that gave you a good overview. Um, I will say very quickly, we are a common app school and at Cincinnati, um, our early action and scholarship deadline is December 1st. So just a, um, an FYI on that and I will turn it over to our next presenter. Thank you. We're at 27 minutes, so I'll try to make it very quick. <laughs> uh, we, I know that we ha all have um, very great information to share. Uh, so again, my name is Elizabeth Miramontes. I'm the Associate Director of International Admissions. I work um, at a small private uh, Catholic Franciscan University located in Joliet, Illinois, which is a beautiful historic suburban neighborhood about 35 miles away from Chicago. Uh, and it's a short train ride away from Chicago. It's it's a small size university that provides students an op uh, opportunity to be fully immersed uh, within, you know, the academic studies and also take advantage of the, um, the smaller, um, smaller campus life. Uh, we're a liberal arts school, so we are a little bit um, more specialized in regards to that, uh, which means that we are dedicated to students of becoming lifelong learners, so you can thrive in the environment that has become the new norm, uh, especially right now. We are invested in teaching our students uh, subjects from domains such as humanities, sciences, commerce, technology. We're nationally ranked number 225 of all national universities in uh, in the US. Uh, we're ninth out of 17 um, Illinois schools, six in among private universities, and the second best college or best um, Catholic college in the state of Illinois. So we were established in 1920. This year is our birthday year, so we're very excited about that. We were founded by the Third Order of St. Francis of Mary Immaculate um, for the education of its own members. Um, for me specifically, I'm a double alum, so I studied criminal and social justice uh, and politics and law for my bachelor's, and then I got my master's in higher education. I can tell you that I absolutely love the school, and you know, it's the, one of the main reasons why um, I recruit for St. Francis is how we were founded and who we are as a university. So our university was founded by sisters who served, um, you know, various ethnic groups who were adjusting to American life. Um, and these sisters, um, they learned, you know, the language that they needed to learn uh, to help the children in their care. And that's spoke to me so much when I was looking at different universities and colleges in the sense of compassion um, and also service to, to not only uh, to the community and, and to children. Uh, so it, it was one of the main reasons why I attended St. Francis. Again, we're a private Catholic university. Uh, we're around 1,800 undergraduate students, but total uh, enrollment uh, with you know, bachelor's, uh, master's, and doctoral is 3,778. So we are a smaller school compared to University of Cincinnati and also uh, Northern Illinois University. We have 50 majors on campus uh, to choose from, uh, around 13 specialized accreditations, we have three, four campuses. So three campuses are in Joliet, Illinois. Um, and we have the main campus, the St. Bonaventure campus and the St. Clair campus. Main campus is pretty much where my office is, admissions, student services, the residence halls. St. Bonaventure campus is more for like political science. We also have a mock courtroom for students that wanna participate in mock trial or uh, you know, want to practice those skills, um, and also a business incubator. Uh, St. Clair campus is more for students that are going into the nursing field, so uh, you have your simulation labs, your cadaver labs, um, all the, uh, the tools necessary to become a, um, a great nurse. And then lastly, it's, we have the um, 
New Mexico Albuquerque campus, which is more for the master's physician assistant program. Uh, we have about 50,000 alumni. Uh, top majors are nursing, healthcare management, biology, criminal social justice, marketing, accounting. But like I said, we also have a variety of other majors on campus and minors. We are test optional. Uh, so we do not require the ACT or the ACT for admissions purposes. Our average GPA is a 3.59 um, and the acceptance rate is a, around 45%. 46% of our students are Catholic, and then 25% is other Christian, 29% have um, other uh, denominations. So as far as the programs that we offer, uh, social work, education, nursing, business are a couple of a few of our programs that are, that are receiving specialized accreditations. Um, when I was in high school, I never knew what an accreditation was. Um, and pretty much what it means is that programs and universities go through uh, pretty much a review of their programs and to meet the standards of what an employer needs in that field. Uh, so making sure that you are meeting that standard or exceeding that standard once you become you know, a nurse specifically. Um, we have an English intensive English program for, uh, for international students as well, um, a bachelor's program. So all of our programs are open to international students. The program uh, for a bachelor's is around 49,000 a year. Um, and we also do offer scholarships for students. It ranges anywhere from 7,000 all the way to 24,000. It just really depends on the type of um, student. Uh, and we also do have a Catholic school scholarship of uh, 3000. If you look at a sticker price, a private university looks more expensive. However, what one student receives might not, another student might not receive. There are a variety of ways of making your education as affordable as possible. Um, so one of the things that you should look into while you're exploring all these different universities and i know that there's so many presentations out there uh but i hope that you're you're able you're able to figure out what is your um your fit is merit-based scholarships need-based scholarships and specialty scholarships so there are a variety of scholarships out there and make sure you do your research um, there are some scholarships that are for you know if you want to go into the orchestra or music art um, and we also do have athletic scholarships we're part of the NAIA uh, so we are able to award merit-based and also athletic scholarships to students so the most important question that you should ask during this whole time is how much is it going to cost you or how much is it going to cost me I know that you know a sticker price might be of 35,000 49,000 60,000 um, but after all the the um, the scholarships, student loans, and anything like that you would be receiving, what are you going to be paying out of pocket? And that is one of the most important things. So you can attend, you know, a prestigious school uh, like many students want to, but the most important thing that you have to focus it on is what are you going to do with the skills, with, with what you are going to be learning at that university or college, and is that university or college going to enable you to use those skills um, in the field? So here's just a map of where we're located. We're located in Joliet. Uh, it's the fourth largest city of Illinois. As a Franciscan University, we incorporate our values into every part of our curriculum and all across the university. So respect, compassion, service, integrity, service and integrity are core values, uh, which goes perfectly well with being a liberal arts school. It allows the student to become a problem solver, critical thinkers, develop communication skills, finessing those skills that are important um, in your classroom. Uh, we are also focused on experiential learning, which is very important, and it's where you learn the most in, in our environment. Uh, experiential learning is not necessarily hands-on, but uh, hands-on learning, but it's hands-on learning with reflection. Um, and so with being a smaller school, with having a, a student to faculty ratio of 12 to 1, uh, it will allow you know, the mentorship and the guidance from your professors. 
100% of our students or 100% of our classes are led by faculty and we do not have teacher assistance. So the, what you will be receiving from, from professors is, you know, things that they have experience in their field. Aside from, you know, every other um, service that is provided at other universities, such as support and tutoring, Office of Disability um, Services, we offer all of that to our students. Here's just a little bit more information about um, the teams uh, or campus life. So how do you apply the experiential learning? Um, and how we do it is through service learning. So for example, in accounting, we help low income families fill out their, their income taxes. Uh, during this time, we have also instituted a Black Saints Matter scholarship and our goal is to reach at 25,000. Uh, so we have you know, created emergency funds for our students. Um, and just to give you an idea of the type of support that you would be getting when you attend St. Francis. Great, so um, now it's going to be NIU's turn. Northern Illinois University is located 65 miles west of Chicago. We, are, we were chartered in 1895. NIU originally opened its doors as Northern Illinois State Normal School in 1899 as a teacher school. Um, but ever since we have grown into a world-class research-focused public institution, uh, the mission of NIU is to empower students through educational excellence and experiential learning we believe a life-changing higher education should be within reach of everyone. Next slide, please. At NIU, we have more than 100 areas of study. So you have options from STEM fields to the visual and performing arts. So whether you're going to be flying a drone, experimenting with virtual reality, or conducting robotics research, we emphasize hands-on learning uh, guided by caring faculty members who are active researchers within their own fields as well. Um, our university is accredited in business, engineering, nursing, visual and performing arts, and all teacher certification programs for meeting the higher standards of academic quality and rigor. Um, so here you're going to see the way that our university is structured. Um, we have uh, six different undergraduate colleges, so majors and minors will fall between these six different colleges. Next slide, please. And like I was said earlier, it's completely okay to be undecided. If you are unsure of what you desire, desire to study, we offer five different exploratory tracks for you to take advantage of, of, which serves as a great opportunity for you to explore our undergraduate degree programs. Um, next slide. And I'm sorry, I feel like I'm rushing through this, but we're gonna run out of time, so I wanna make sure we, we, we cover it all. Um, so here you're gonna see a checklist of what I usually recommend students when they're exploring majors. Uh, so the first one would be to visit our academic advising center. And so um, many students need guidance in developing their academic and career plans. So our academic advising center is an academic program for students who are exploring or undecided about their major. Our advisors guide students in exploring majors and academic options that align with their interests and abilities. Some of the services that you can expect from uh, the Academic Advising Center is advice on completion of NIU general education requirements, major and career exploration, strategic course planning. Uh, they also help advise students who are pursuing pre-professional health areas. Uh, so those are very helpful for our students when they, they initially come and are starting to explore what careers they're interested in. Um, also, using online resources can be extremely helpful. Career tests provide valuable information about your interests and priorities. Uh, this knowledge can help you make academic choices, such as your major, your minor, and it helps you move with confidence and make um, strategic career decisions. Some examples of uh, online resources are gonna be like the LASI assessment, the strong interest inventory, or something that we um, recommend a lot to our students here is Focus 2, which is a self-guided uh, career website. This is going to allow you to complete a questionnaire that measures what you like to do, what's important to you, what you value, and just in general skills that you um, have already. 
Visitor Career Services Office. So just like it was mentioned earlier, uh, we have a variety of resources and uh, services we have to offer through that center. Uh, but one to particularly highlight on is our career counseling. So our career counselors are going to take a holistic approach to career development. They're really going to offer um, you one-on-one -on -one counseling to help you identify your strengths, discuss what your goals are, create a plan to get the information that you need, again, to make those academic decisions and to, again, um, help just make confident career decisions. And uh, finally, it's going to be participating in undergraduate research. I personally always encourage students to engage in research regardless of what major you decide to go into. So at NIU, we have different programs designed to foster faculty guided student artistry and research um, at all different levels in the area of academic interest that you may have. So like why research, right? So research allows you to apply what you learn in the classroom to real world, real world problems and issues. You'll be able to network with professionals and experts in your field, but also you start to build confidence and start to develop creative ideas, problem, serving, problem solving skills in your chosen area of study. Next slide, please. All right, so NIU's vision is really to be an engine of innovation and to advance social mobility, um, but to also promote pr professional, personal, and intellectual growth. So by getting you involved, um, you are able to bring your diverse life experiences to our Husky community. Um, we celebrate diversity and recognize it as one of our key strengths. NIU is home to a wealth of resource centers, which serve as a home away from home to our students and are essential in their development and learning. They also provide spaces where you can express your cultural heritage, where you can broaden your cultural knowledge. Our cultural centers include the Asian American Center, the Center for Black Studies, the Disability Resource Center, the Latino Resource Center, Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, and Military and Post-Traditional Student Services. Um, they also have different academic diversity centers within those centers. So if you were interested in potentially have like I did during my undergraduate career, uh, Latino, uh, Latino and Latin American Studies minor, you can add a certain um, emphasis um, through these academic diversity centers. You can also participate in one or more of our student of, of our 300 plus student organizations. And so getting involved in student organizations is really going to help you build leadership skills. Um, you can also join our student government association if you want to be the voice of the student body. They make very important decisions on to what happens with like student fees um, and just in general um, share governance with the administration of the university. Volunteer opportunities. So we offer multiple volunteer opportunities for you to take advantage uh, throughout the year. One of the biggest events we have is NIU Cares Day. Uh, so it's a day when the entire uh, campus comes out and does service projects throughout the local community. So the Calvin and Sycamore area, but also here on campus. But we also encourage you to volunteer in nonprofit organizations um, that are creating social change here locally. And there is a lot of different uh, areas that you can um, get involved in. So student activism, this is, I think, one of my favorite ways to really get involved in this part, particularly, particularly is one that hits home. Um, we hold a power retreat, which is a People's Organizing Weekend Empowerment Retreat. Um, and this is a retreat for student activists on campus. Um, it is also per, for prospective student activists and organizers looking to really hone their skills and work in community with their peers. Monthly, we hold diversity dialogues, uh, which provides a forum for members of the university community to talk openly and honestly on complex and important diversity topics. So this really helps our students uh, promote the development of global awareness, cultural competency, empathy within our students, and sensitivity in general for everyone that's part of our Husky community. And the last one I'm going to touch on is civic engagement. Uh, so getting civically engaged, uh, you're able to not only make the change here on your own campus, but even statewide, maybe even at a nation, uh, nation a federal level. So we here on campus have the Democracy Challenge, which is intended to get out the vote, to get students civically engaged, uh, to inform students on how to register to vote or how even to be an informed voter. Um, or, uh, my personal uh, advice is always to also consider uh, joining a student-led social movement. Like Elizabeth mentioned earlier, there's so many ways in the past historically that students have 
uh, spoken out and demanded change from their campuses. So there's many ways that you can now continue to make social change, whether that's on your campus or back home, wherever it is uh, that you see a need. Next slide, please. And then here you're just going to see what is happening uh, now at NIU. Also what's new for this upcoming academic year. So we um, are really proud of our test blind policy, which means that we are no longer going to be looking at test scores for admission consideration for fall 2021. And we also new to the common application. Um, there, uh, we also encourage you to connect with us virtually. Uh, whether that's through a virtual tour, which are a personalized appointment with your admission counselor, or to join us for one of our open houses that are coming up very soon. And then below there, you're going to see our contact info in case you have any questions. Um, yeah, next slide. And then here you're going to see all three of our uh, contact information. Um, so if in case you wanted to contact us and now we're also going to open it up for questions um, to the students that are here with us today. I know that we covered a lot of material and um, this is a lot to take in, especially when you're just exploring, but just know that you um, have a part in whatever it is that you want to be a change in, whether that's going to be academically or whether that's going to be social, right? So just know that um, you have many options at your disposal. So we can go ahead and answer some questions now. And while we're waiting for a question or two to come in, I would just also add to that, even if you don't know yet, as we've talked about quite a bit, that's okay. College is such a great time to get to explore. Um, and as you've heard, we have so many different ways at so many different institutions to do that. So there is a question, um, what are some activist trips that you have at NIU? Yeah, so we um, have Husky Alternative Breaks, which happens during the spring break, and they usually cover different topics like social justice, um, environmental. So they are intended for students to go away on a trip that's uh, national, so you can go to different states and participate in a project. Um, you can go on our website, you can see the ones we have, we have had in the last couple of years, um, but usually those are going to happen for spring break, and there's a very small cost that come with those. Yeah, good question. It's nice to start to think about getting involved right away. Any other questions? It's definitely a lot of information in a short period of time. So take it in, um, certainly take down our contact information or take a screenshot of it. Um, you can visit our university websites, um, reach out to us if you have specific questions or things that you might be wondering about. Um, there's another one. What are your policies regarding college credit for both AP and IB? So I will give you kind of a general answer and I will let um, both schools tell you if theirs is different, but um, generally speaking, I think most of us are going to have pretty similar policies that you will find on our website. Typically, everyone's website is going to have um, a full list of the AP credit. We accept the scores that you have to have in order to have them be accepted and then what courses um, they will actually accept for you. So it's a pretty lengthy list both for AP and IB. But if you go to the school's website and you type in AP or IB, um, it should bring you to the page that will give you all the details. And uh, usually College Board uh, provides that information too of um, what usually is accepted as well. Yeah, so for NIU, we do accept those AP credits or dual credit uh, dual enrollment courses. So you just need to submit your transcripts and your test scores and then your academic advisor will discuss those once those have been ev evaluated by us. And remember, you don't you typically have to do that until the spring when you've actually decided on your school. So don't feel like you have to worry about that yet. Um, we'll see on your transcript that you've taken AP or IB. Um, and then once you've decided where you're going, then you'll send us the official scores. Any other questions? We have just about a minute to go. So I know I said I was going to share the um, the college comparison charts, um, but um, I forgot we don't have the chat capability. Uh, if you go to bigfuture.collegeboard.org um, or just Google uh, College Board Compare Colleges, you'll be able to see the um, the rubric and use that. Um, and it's also live. There's also another one for 
um, it has presentations uh, and also college planning for each year. So if you're like a freshman, a sophomore, a junior or senior that's participating today, you'll be able to download those checklist items. So we have one last question, and I think this is actually going to be a really great way to wrap up our conversation. If we choose an undecided major, how do you recommend narrowing down which college you go to? That is such an awesome question because I think a lot of students often think I choose my college based on where, what I'm going to study. And I can tell you that the number one college major starting college is either exploratory, undecided, every school runs that type of a program a little bit differently, but that is typically going to be the most common major. Even if it feels like everyone around you has a, a major choice, they don't. And even if they do, most of them are going to change their mind. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with not knowing what you want to study. And in many cases, choosing a major or choosing a school largely based on what you plan to study might be a little bit limiting if you change your mind. So just keep in mind, um, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different things about each school. We've all talked about things that we have in common and things that are very different, um, but the type of institution, where it's located, what they have to offer, the ways to get involved are all great things to keep in mind, regardless of what you plan to study. Definitely echo that. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for such an amazing session. Um, and thank you uh, for joining us today for this virtual college exploration um, experience. I just want to give you a few little uh, tidbits as we wrap up today. First and foremost, after you close out of this window, there's going to be a very brief four question survey um, that will appear. Please go uh, ahead and answer that survey. It's really useful for the presenters and the organization in itself to make sure you're getting the best knowledge possible um, in the future. Um, I, once again, I'd also encourage you to sign up for more sessions. Um, if you liked what you saw today or you want to explore some more information about colleges that you learned about today, go to I acac.org and register for those there. And in addition to that, there's also recordings available. So if there's any sessions you've missed or haven't been able to view, um, please know that you can see those at any time. But thank you so much again for taking the time uh, this evening to join us. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. Take care. Good luck. Bye. Bye.